Hello everyone, my name is Bilal Haji. I am assistant professor in Marathwada Institute of Technology, Aurora. Our topic of discussion is Fundamental Laws of Mechanics. Before going to Fundamental Laws of Mechanics, we just see what is Engineering Mechanics. Engineering Mechanics is nothing but it is a branch of science which deals with the study of forces and their effects on a body. So, if we are talking about forces, so we all should know about the force. So, what is force? Force can be defined as an any action that tends to change the state of rest or motion of a body to which it is applied. If we want to define or describe the force, we should know the characteristics, characteristics of the force. There are four characteristics of the force. First one, the magnitude of force. Second one, the point of application of force. About which point the force is acting, we should know this. And the third one is direction of application, in which direction the force is acting. And the fourth one is line of action. So this is about the force. So engineering mechanics is classified into two types, that is statics and dynamic dynamics. First one, that is static, it is defined as it is a branch of science which deals with the study of forces and their effects on a body when body is at rest condition. So if you want to quote any example of static, so just see here, if I put this mobile on my hand, so this mobile at this time it is at rest condition. Though it is at rest condition, but it is acted by some forces, that is first force is its own weight which is acting in downward direction. So if I put this mobile or I kept this mobile on my hand, so because of my hand some reactions are developing from my hand, that reaction is nullifying the weight of its weight, its own weight. So because of that nullif because of that process the mobile is come to rest and this is the example of static. So as a resultant in this case the resultant of this force system is zero because there are two forces are acting on a body that is its own weight and the normal reaction which is developing from my hand so and that normal reaction is nullifying or opposing the weight of this mobile and resultant in this case is zero. So this is a balanced force system and the uh, force is acting on a body at rest condition. So this is the example of static. The next one is dynamics. So what is dynamics? Dynamics it is a branch of science which deals with the study of forces and their effects on a body when body is in motion. Again dynamics is classified into two types that is kinetics and kinematics. So in kinetics we are taking forces into consideration which causes motion but in kinematics we are not taking forces into consideration which causes motion. So this is all about the engineering mechanics. So engineering mechanics is entirely based on fundamental laws of mechanics. There are various types of fundamental laws of mechanics out of which we are just going to see three laws of mechanics. That is first one is Newton's law of motion, second one is law of parallelogram of forces and third one is law of transmissibility of forces. So Newton's law of motion, there are three types of Newton's law that is Newton's first law, Newton's second law and Newton's third law. We all know very well all the laws of Newton's but we just see what exactly the Newton's first law, second and third law. So this is the Newton's first law of motion. It states that every object or every body will continue in a state of rest or uniform motion unless and until it is acted by some external forces. Unless and until until external force is not acting on body, body will continue in its state of rest or uniform motion. Means we can also say that if the balance force system is acting on a body, then it will not change the state of that body. In that case, acceleration will be equal to zero. So, so, this is about the Newton's first law. The second law is the force is directly proportional to acceleration. So, if we, if we think about it, so what, what is happening in first law? See, force is zero. Because of that zero force means any, 
there is no force acting on a body, acceleration will be equal to zero. See this case and this case. When body is at rest condition, velocity is zero, then acceleration is also equal to zero. Because balance force system is acting on a body. We know that in balance force system, resultant of that force system equals to zero. And in, in this case also, when when the object or the motion uh, the, when the body is in motion uh, means velocity is not equal to zero but if velocity is uniform that's why acceleration acceleration equals to zero so in that case in this case force is equal to zero they, therefore acceleration is also be equal to zero and what uh, newton's second law said force is directly proportional to acceleration means if we apply force to any body then it will get accelerated so from this we can say that newton's first law is nothing but a special case of newton's second law because here is here uh, force is zero so that's why acceleration is equal to zero and here force is directly proportional to acceleration so if we increase the force if we increase the force then body acceleration will also will be will be increased so this is about the Newton's first law and Newton's second law. See the example of this Newton's first law. As the car accelerated from zero motion, your body tends to push back into the seat due to its inertia, which is trying to remain at rest. So, and we can also say that if unbalanced force system is acting on a body, then body will get accelerated. And the acceler amount of acceleration will be directly proportional to the resultant of that unbalanced force system. If unbalanced force resultant will increase, then our acceleration will also will increase. So this is all about the Newton's second law. And what is Newton's third law? It is very common. It states that for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. This law is very familiar in everyday situation. So example of this law, in order to walk across the floor, you must push back on the floor and the floor on the floor with your foot according to newton's third law the floor pushes forward on your foot which propels you forward this of course requires friction to the work another example of the newton's third law is the recoil recoil of gun during firing so if person is firing <coughs> if person is firing a bullet from his gun then because of this firing he will he will experience some jerk which is which push back this uh, person in the in the backward direction while bullet, the direction of bullet is is in forward direction so this is the exam another example of newton's third law now second one is law of parallelogram of forces what exactly law of parallelogram of forces said it say it said that if two forces are acting on a body at a point and if it is represented by two sides of the parallelogram, then we can find this uh, resultant of these two forces by the diagonal of that parallelogram. See, uh, there is one body have, having the point A. At this point, two forces are acting, this P force and Q force. If, and these two forces are representing represented by two sides of the parallelogram. Then if you want to find out the resultant of this parallelogram, then the resultant of this force system, then we can find from its diagonal. So its diagonal will represent the resultant of this force P and Q. The force AD is called as resultant of this force system. Force AC is P force and force AB is Q force. And that two forces are called as component of, components of this resultant. And this alpha is this alpha is the angle between the force and the horizontal plane horizontal side okay this expression uh, will be used for calculating the resultant of this force system under root of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos alpha and if alpha is zero then this expression will reduce into under root of p plus q the whole square equals to p plus q uh, this shows that all the forces are in same direction. These two forces as well as this resultant will also in same direction. And if alpha equals to 180, 
expression this uh, expression will reduce into p minus q this negative sign shows this q is opposite in direction this q is acting in opposite direction of this p and r and if alpha is 90 degree then this expression will re reduce into under root of p plus q g or p plus q p square plus q square means this diagram shows this condition and alpha we can calculate the alpha of this uh, case alpha equals to tan inverse of q by p this is all about law of parallelogram of forces this is the second last slide before we complete this is the law of transmissibility of forces what it said in short i will say this if uh, this this law said that if force uh, if one body having the point a and if uh, at point a one force is acting so we can replace this force and we can apply this force <coughs> at point b and it will not alter or it will not change the state of this body but the condition the <coughs> this force will should be in we should be in same line of action of this force if this will happen this will then this force is then this <coughs> then this uh, will, uh, will not alter the state of this force this state of this <coughs> body okay this is all about the law of parallel this is all about the fundamental laws of mechanics thanks for watching thank you